Let's jump to the story from the Post Millennial Daily Show shocked when focus group of black voters revealed their voting for Trump. Biden, you done dropped the ball, brother, said one female voter. But I believe it was like split, right? Yeah, it was, it was say, half uh, and half. There were six uh, on the panel and three said that they were voting for Trump. And it was actually very amusing how they said that they were voting for Trump. You know, it's like they didn't even want to admit it. <clears throat> uh, it, it, it was actually two women. Stunning. Yeah, it was it was uh, three and two women who predicted the black community would shift their support to Trump this election cycle on claims the Democratic Party and President Biden had left them behind. Johnson chuckled and said, I didn't see that coming. Mm-hmm. You know, they use the issues of African-American community as a soapbox to stand on and make promises just to get us to come out and vote. And then once we vote and everyone's in place, it's like, well, what happened? Said one of the female Trump supporters defending her vote. It's true. Didn't Trump say, what have you got to lose? He was like, vote for me. What do you got to lose? Mm -hmm. I think at a certain point, Democrats think they can make promises, disappear for four years, come back four years later and say promises again. And eventually people are going to be like, you're lying to me. And the way Biden dangled Kamala Harris's skin color in front of people Mm -hmm. and is like a bait to get them to vote was like disgusting to any human with eyeballs in a brain is like, yo, you can't like racist me by trying to like use my it's so gross and disgusting to do that. And I think these people are waking obviously aware of that. Like, I don't know. I don't know in how many numbers I think you're going to get a more sizable swing than you did last election. There are many jokes about Trump having a mugshot and therefore being able to be identifiable to black men who have a narrative about being persecuted by the prison industrial complex. Perhaps that is a factor. The fact is, very few people generally are plugged into shows like this. I'm glad more people are, but lots of people are low information clientele class voters who are dependent on handouts and the Democrats are promising to buy them off, then they will still vote for the Democrats. The thing that might stop that is, as you've seen in Chicago and in New York and all these so-called sanctuary states, is a mass influx of illegals who are now competing with them in their local area for housing and food stamps. And you're getting a lot of people just from the black community, the local black community, going to the local representatives and going, hang on, this money's for us. This is our money. So if the clientele classes stop fighting, there might be a swing. I just don't think it's going to be in a sizable enough number to give Trump a majority of the black vote. I don't I, think he'll get a majority, but I do think the recognition that it's all lip service from the Democrats is extremely important and actually helps down ticket. Uh, I think that this is going to potentially pave the way for Republicans in districts that they are usually written off as like, oh, this is a Democratic stronghold, I'll never win this, to actually make a more convincing argument. Because I think part of the issue is Democrats do say, oh, no, we're with you, and we you've gone through a lot, and the, you know they say whatever they need to say, and then they do forget the voters, especially voters of color who have, who have voted for them. But uh, Republicans in that sense have also done a disservice because they say, oh, well, you're a minority voter, so you're going to vote for Democrats. They sort of also forget that they could potentially be more creative in their messaging. Yeah, I think one of the ladies on the panel speaks to what you're saying. I think she had a very powerful, uh, you know, line about, they, you know, every four years they pull out a soapbox and they stand on the soapbox and then they speak to the, you know, the black community about their problems. And then when the election's over, you know, they put the soapbox away, forget about their promises. You know, I, I think that's that, that kind of inroads that sort of like, planting the seeds of uh, being open-minded uh, about alternatives uh, to the Democratic Party is uh, very powerful. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, Trump could get close to 20 percent, and that may be all he needs in some of these swing states. But I agree. And it's not it's not that big. Mm-hmm. You always get this narrative where it's like, oh, he's going to get it this time. He's going to get a bit big. Nah, you know, maybe he improves a point or two or something mm-hmm. like that. But the analysis is that if he does break 20 percent, Democrats can't possibly win. That's the, that's what they claim. I don't know if it's true, but Wall Street Journal reported that. You know, in certain swing states. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. You know, Milwaukee. I mean, he may be in within, you know, the margin of shenanigans uh, in Milwaukee. <laughs> that's and, a good way to put it. In huh? Detroit. Yeah, well, I'm being careful, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, Detroit, uh, Michigan, and uh, or, I'm sorry, Detroit and, Wisconsin, and Milwaukee, Wisconsin, uh, I think that you know, you've seen some of the election law changes and they definitely <clears throat> laying the groundwork to, you know, pull a, pull a 2020 again. So uh, it's, it's more than that, too. And Repu- yeah. Republicans have no idea what's going on. This, this is what the right always does. They always react. They only respond. The Democrats will do things and the Republicans are just desperately trying to chase after. Them. I've been trying to demand the open source of the voting machines, the code, because yes. if you don't know what those things are flipping votes, it's just. Have you unusable? Have you tried shaking your fist into the air? I've tried. Because I've tried many I, times. Because I don't, I don't, I don't know. Open the source code. What about a strongly worded I've letter? I've been advocating that, that for a long time, Ian. I, li- I really like that. But I, I, I say that because 
there's not a single act of Congress that will do anything about it. Perhaps at the state levels, you can uh, vote in your uh, local elections. So your state reps and your state senators can actually bring about these changes. I recommend getting in touch with them. But it's you need a mass movement. That that populist energy that was that you know you know what I'll tell you the deep state loves. They love that the populist uprising is is for the presidency because they can control everything else so long as the people ignore their local elections. Yeah, and Occupy Wall Street. That was like, they didn't like that one. When the yep. So I think a good example is, you know, we had the Georgia Elections Board this week had a number of uh, election security experts uh, go to them and persuaded them to look into 2020 again. But more importantly, they voted for a hand count at the pre-seek level that had to match the total ballots cast in the voting machines. This is important because the voting machines, uh, it, it, you know, the type that they use in Georgia, they draw from ballot images and they had, uh, you know, since essentially 17,000 and some odd missing ballot images. So in other words, you cannot val- verify those votes. And so Biden won by what we're told like 12,000 votes or whatever. You cannot prove it. You cannot verify it. I mean, yes, it's been certified, but it's not there where you have the evidence of what actually took place. So I think that's a good start. It doesn't mean that it, you know, going to what you what you said that you can't, you know, adjust the votes within that because, you know, the tabulators uh, can can be hacked. They 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 proved this in front of the the Georgia State Supreme Court. A uh, number of experts uh, have, have uh, gone and, and proven that. Uh, it, and it's not even that difficult. I mean, you can watch videos of, of people doing it. They, you know, they take the machine, they put it on the floor and like, this is how you hack this. And, you know, they go into the back and, you know, they just disassemble it. And, you know, they demystifies uh, the problems with it. So I, I, you know, I do think that we that, that it's a good s- step in the right direction, but we need a lot more of it. And Republican Party, we're told, like you know, with the with the new uh, you know uh, RNC regime that they put in place, that they were going to be all about election integrity. Well, I see very little of it uh, in, in in reality. That's going to be serious enough to stop, uh, you know, stop the ballot uh, chicanery. Do you think Republicans are ever intimidated to talk about um, election integrity because the response from the left is always like, oh, so you're going to question the results of the election? Lawfare. Mm-hmm. It's 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 lawfare. You know, um, you know, we we see smart smart Maddox lawsuit is still ongoing against uh, Fox News. Fox News was, you know, cap, you know, capitulated and, uh, you know, you, you know, cut it with uh, Dominion. Uh, and I think that spooked a lot of people. You know, they you know, they dragged people in front of show trials, you know, like with this, uh, you know, as part of that racketeering case, there were like three of the defendants were brought in to because they, you know, did did an unauthorized supposedly. <laughs> we, I say supposedly because, you know, there's withholding evidence potentially in that case. And, you know, there's no, you know, the case wasn't tossed or anything. Um, but but essentially they had an un- unauthorized search of the equipment and, uh, you know, and, and so, you know, you had Jenna Ellis in tears and, you know, you had all of this, uh, you know, all of this stuff going on. And that's what's happening. You know, they are doing Soviet style political show trials and lawfare uh, to shut people up. And that tells me where there's smoke, there's fire. Connor, do you feel the same type of pressure to have uh, some sort of integrity process in UK elections? Or do you feel like this uniquely American problem? We don't have mass mail-in ballots because when we did, there was a massive amount of fraud in the UK. I'm not, of course, suggesting that anything would happen in the US. That would be terrible. No, we've, we've, <laughs> we've essentially prevented mass mail-in ballots. You have to specifically request one by a certain window, and even then there are a small proportion of the votes. I don't think we have voting machines. I think we have hand counting. And I think So you don't have, have to deal with this code issue. No, I don't I don't think that's the, the same the same issue as well. Um, we also as far as I know, we don't have primary processes either. So we don't even have the problem of superdelegates like secretly signing things away as they're trying to circumvent that, even though we did have problems selecting a leader with the Conservative Party. That's a that's a whole other issue. There's not really a conversation about election integrity in the UK, it's more so are people actually doing the things that they are given an electoral mandate to do? And that is the answer that is given a justifiable no. But how, how, correct how me. explain explain how the Prime Minister is elected. How do, how do they come to be in power? So the party and the members are meant to appoint a leader. So I'm familiar with the Conservative Party. Um, if they don't coup the leader out, what happens is there is a leadership contest, maybe about five candidates. They do debates. They do local hustings events where they'll get all the members in the room and they'll give speeches. But, but just, just to clarify, the people do not vote for our prime minister. 
Not directly, no. There's no right. federal election for a prime minister. You vote for a party, and, and the prime the minister has a constituency as well. So it's almost right. like he's running in a Senate seat. And so it there there is a bit of a difference, but how it would work now is that the Democratic Party would just vote amongst themselves, much like you vote for a party, and then they choose who the prime minister is going to be. Yeah, it's very similar to what happened with the electorate voted for Boris Johnson. He got removed. Then they voted, the members voted for Liz Truss. She got removed. So they just installed Rishi Sunak. So... Look to the UK as a precursor, I suppose. You said what? the party and then the members. What is the difference of the party and the members? So the party is comprised of the MPs, so the elected representatives, and there's like a backroom committee for the Conservative Party called the 1922 Committee that's made up of executive MPs, and they're elected by other MPs, and they have the power to call votes of no confidence in the Prime Minister, for example. And then the members are the ones that are registered to their paying. So like if you register to vote as a Democrat or Republican, you get to vote in the, the final two leadership election who will then be elected as either the, the leader of the party or eventually the prime minister if the party wins power. Well, as shocking as the, the Labour Party's victory was in the recent elections, I look at the French election as a, as a virgin of the type of rigging you get in countries where there is some election integrity there because in France only the expats uh, send the mail-in ballots in who are like the expats who are broad. And I think with the French elections, uh, you know, the way that they stymied National Rally, Marine Le Pen, uh, you know, you, that's where the you see the globalists in the corporatists, the blob, as, you know, uh, Mike Benz calls them. Uh, that's a Michael Go phrase, actually, the blob. Oh, OK. Yeah. Thank you for pointing that out. Uh, but he... You know, you see the globalists behind the scenes, uh, the power brokers where you have this, this they call it the center right is from a French perspective, uh, you know, and, and the hard left, except for maybe, you know, like the communists uh, and, and sort of the, the, the very left wing fringe sort of make a deal with the devil and just to block national rally doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, but, the, you know, France is going to be in turmoil and uh, well, I think, you know, I think Macron is going to is somewhat wounded, at least uh, for for the the near term of like the next year. So I, I, I think it's interesting in like the European politics, you do have some election integrity, but you do see your sort of backroom deals and, you know, uh, conniving uh, just carried out in a different way. Well, the, there. the UK and the French election is very different because sure. the French system is a proportional representation system, which inclines various small marginal parties to make coalitions to block the most popular party. Sure. Uh, also in the UK, the Labour election wasn't surprising. Mm -hmm. It was actually cheered on by right-wingers. And the reason for that is the Conservative Party, having betrayed us, is standing in the way of an actual right-wing party. And so they just thought, well, we'll rip the Band-Aid off, get rid of the Conservatives, and then get rid of Labour in five years. But I think you're right in that Macron's gamble will not have paid off because he's blocked Jordan Bardella from being Prime Minister right now. But in 2027, when he's running for president, I think Le Pen sweeps it because he hasn't given National Rally essentially a mandate to govern and be incapable of solving the problems which France is facing. And so all the onus is on him and all of the left-wing parties. So they could run in opposition, build up momentum for the president. To the entire establishment. Yeah, that's, that's actually a good place for them to be in some ways. Um, so it's not good for the French, but... If, <laughs> right. Exactly. If they gave Le Pen's party, what's it called? National, National Rally. 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 If they gave them the opportunity to, uh, how did you phrase it, to, to actually fix things in the to, country? To not be able to fix things. Oh, so Macron's gamble was essentially the 28-year-old Jean Badala, who's joined the party since he was 16 and has rocketed to the top, he's now number two in Le Pen's party, would have become prime minister if National Rally would have won this round of parliamentary elections, but Macron would have stayed president. And so Macron's thinking, I'm deeply unpopular. In 2027, I, I, I think he can run again, but it would be very unprecedented to get a third term. He's thinking, I could have this massive insurgent right-wing party get into government, and then I can just sit there and blame them if they're in the parliament for not dealing with economic problems, the pension crisis, the immigration crisis, all this sort of stuff, and then say, vote to put me and my party back in power, give me the mandate to govern, to give me stability. The problem now is that National Rally didn't sweep it, and in desperation, he made a pact with the communists, and now all of the left-wing parties are the governing body, and so it looks like all of the left-wing parties are going to be at fault, and so Marine Le Pen could win as president in 2027. Wow. That's right. I think there is a lot of short-term thinking like that. Some of the reporting that I heard around National Rally's rise was really just 
panic and fear mongering. It reminds me so much of what happens in the U.S. There's there's sort of a I'll make a deal here and, and we just have to get through this one election. But there's to what you're speaking to, there's there's no thought of what the, how the long term game could play out. I mean, for all that we talk about, there are, you know, powers that work and there are things being strings that are being pulled. I actually think a lot of uh, progressive causes are deeply emotional and mm-hmm. therefore it clouds the decision making. Well, they're also full it's of fair. stupid people as well. Yes. Lack of intelligence and high emotion. Sometimes they go hand in hand. Like the liberal economic orders lost it, whereas the Chinese are 100 years. They're planning hundreds of years in advance. And is that real or is that just like a, a sure. fallacy? Like, is that actually true? I was in your plan. Have we poisoned our, our minds with phthalates and, and endocrine disruptors to the point where even the people that are running the show have no way to see past five years from now? Yeah, we're yes. running on dopamine. That's right. And they're not is, like the Chinese eat enough rice and fish that they're like, yo, we're still here. We're still with it. It's the grandchildren of the li- liberal economic order and wealth lasts three generations. Thanks for watching this clip from TimCast IRL. Make sure to check out the live show Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. on this channel. Subscribe and we'll see you all there.